Well, it seems to me that if we're using accounting methods that, that don't accurately r reflect reality, then the fundamental problem here is that we're lying to ourselves. We're fooling ourselves. And we're, we're, we're fooling ourselves with regard to a, a very large sum of money. Uh, so, Dr. Holtz, can, uh, are we making these decisions under a flawed, uh, under flawed accounting rules without a good idea of the relevant trade-offs? That is, if we're analyzing these incorrectly, do we really have the ability accurately to ascertain whether uh, some other program or, or no action at all might be preferable? I, I don't believe so. I, I think that you know, fair value accounting would affect a lot of different aspects of the operation of the government. Uh, it would affect the um, analysis of new programs. It would affect uh, the, uh, the re-estimates that occur each year. It would affect the balance sheet presentation. But the most important thing it would affect would be the decision making by the Congress about the relative costs of programs. Now, the Congress has the right to determine the value of programs. That, that's what it does. But it should be presented with an accurate measure of the cost so that they can make good decisions, and they're not right now. And if we're not doing that, then we're fooling ourselves. We're, we're, we're not getting accurate information. Or when we present information saying this is worth it, uh, this is making money, when in fact it's not, we're not making logical decisions. Uh, it, it, I think the most important point that, that um, Dr. Dalal made was that the Congress has precluded the CBO or anyone else from giving a fair representation of the expected cost to the programs. That's not in your interest. And Mr. Goliath, we're, we're, we're not really talking here about changing programs. We're, we're talking about analyzing them accurately. Is that, that correct? Right. Um, so we're talking about the cost. Uh, and usually in these debates, we hear a lot about the benefits of the programs. Um, fair value is completely agnostic to the benefits of the program. You can have a government program that costs money and provides benefits to people. I think that, in fact, that's actually quite intuitive. Uh, uh, it's credit reform that flips that upside down and suggests that you can provide benefits to people and also earn a net return, uh, which, which doesn't really make much sense. You know, and, and I'd ask both of you, what, what are the risks to the taxpayer when we pretend that programs uh, raise money for the government while the CBO finds that they lose money under fair value. What kind of risk does that present? Uh, there are hypothetical answers to that, but I'll give you a real one. Uh, we did an estimate of the taxpayer cost of the implicit subsidy and guarantee to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. We did it back in 2003 or 4 when I was CBO director. That number was about $20 billion a year or $200 billion. It was painfully close to what the taxpayer ultimately had to shell out in the crisis for the housing GSEs. That's the risk you run. You will not budget for real costs that will happen at very bad moments. Um, well, I would, uh, the, the sort of, the flaws in the Federal Credit Reform Act actually make the entire uh, world of finance appear as a gigantic arbitrage opportunity for the federal government. Uh, to show you how distorting that is, you've heard that Greece has a bit of a debt problem. And the market has, uh, is charging them quite a high interest rate on their bonds. Under FICRA, if the federal government purchased Greece's debt, it would book an immediate profit. I can't imagine members of, many members of the committee suggesting that that looks right to them. Maybe we should look into that, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Elliott, on, on the net, examining all federal programs in the aggregate, and all costs and benefits of these programs. Does the academic literature indicate that during normal economic times, the federal credit programs are net negative or a net positive for the economy? We don't know is the short answer. One reason we don't know is there are many judgment calls that have to be made. I think there are certain programs, student loan programs, for example, where it's very clear that there's a market imperfection that really can't be solved other than by having a very significant federal role. Programs like that, there's no question in my mind that at least properly run, provide a significant economic benefit. Many of the other programs, it's harder to say. In many ways, they're more redistributional than anything else. It's choosing 
which segments of the population to help, and their Congress may have valid reasons for helping them, or they may not. Thank you. Okay, I see my time's expired. Ranking Member Maloney. Thank, thank you.